With Halo Infinite, they are removing the red versus blue system for this friend or foe system, which has some fans of the classic system not so happy. But I want to talk about why I feel it's not necessarily the team colors that's always showing you who's an enemy player, but the UI has always been the main indicator. And in this video, I want to break that down all for you. So if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So as we know, Halo Infinite is throwing out the traditional team colors that we've had throughout the entirety of 20 year experience of playing Halo for this new coding system with a new friend or foe system that outlines the player in a player's chosen color system. Many people like this new system as it does allow them to express their own personal customized Spartan a little bit better within the multiplayer experience. Though, on the other hand, some more traditional fans don't necessarily like it because it feels like it kind of takes away the team element and also clear visibility of who's enemy and who's foe. But what I'd say is that I think it's always been the UI that's always indicated who's friendly or who's foe more than actual team colors. And so in this video, I want to do an analytical deep dive on how player recognition within multiplayer matches work within Halo. And then we can compare that with other games out there within the market that are also first person shooters and see how their systems can possibly be integrated into Halo Infinite as well to find a nice little middle ground here. So if you guys like these analytical kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this as it does feed the algorithm and it really does help out the channel you want to stay updated with everything going on with halo as it ramp up to the release of halo infinite make sure you tap subscribe so let's get right into the content here so let's start off with the beginning at ce as there were team colors with that one red versus blue and the reason why red and blue worked out very well for ce is because every spartan looks exactly the same besides the coloring scheme that they have and so, very important to point out that if you're looking at a new player, that you gotta make sure that you're looking at an enemy player or a friendly player, and the only way you can really can tell is by the color of their armor. And the idea of team colors is nothing new for us humans. We've done this plenty of years previously with sports having a home team and away team kind of coloring to be able to tell who is on which team, because obviously the equipment that people are utilizing within these most of these sports especially like games like football you can't really tell who is who without having a very visual obvious color that's why they go with that system take a look at this picture for example this is from like some vr football game but take a look at this obviously it's pretty easy to tell who's on your team and who's on the enemy team now with halo infinite you can have the same colors on different teams so when you do that with football obviously it can get kind of confusing on who exactly is on your team but with video games you can do something different with a different kind of UI that you can add to your friendly players to indicate who's on the team and you can see even utilizing the same kind of colors that you can easily indicate who is on your team. There's a lot more you can do to help identify who is on which team. Traditionally, what developers have done has had the friendly players have a UI name above their head and the enemy players traditionally don't until you either look directly at them or they have a different color UI name above their head as well. First person shooters generally actually don't utilize team colors that often. Opting to go into the art style of the game to kind of help indicate who is enemy and who is foe. Games like Counter-Strike is a perfect example where you have the counter terrorist and the terrorist teams visually pretty easy to tell who's on which team but even they have their own ui as well to indicate who's friendly and who is foe to circle back with halo they've done the similar kind of idea but with just team colors for your armor though i don't necessarily believe that it was the armor color itself that helped indicate which player was on which team, but more of the UI that's always been there to help indicate who's on your team. Now I want to use this classic Halo 2 clip for example of how I am able to recognize enemy players within a game. So you see right when I spawn in, I see a friendly player to my left and a friendly player to my right. So I have a general sense of where my team is and generally how the games work within spawning systems is that wherever your team isn't, that's most likely where the enemy team is. So I instantly look across the map 
where I don't see any friendly indicators. Utilizing the UI to help me get some game sense of where the enemy players are. Now take note, as I go around this corner, I see a player without any UI on and I instantly start shooting at them. Now I've had years of training knowing that enemy players that don't have any kind of UI on them are most likely enemy players and have a different kind of color to their armor. But was it the armor that told me that they were enemy player or was it the lack of a UI? that told me that there was an enemy player. I would argue for the latter, because the UI that indicates friendly players is what clearly stands out in this gameplay. Having the UI over the friendly player's head is what isn't natural to the environment and the human eye can easily spot something like that. Without that big indicator above a friendly's head, it would honestly be tough to tell who is on your team within a split second. This next section, I wanna go over how other first person shooters indicate who is friendly and who is foe without having to utilize team colors. So walk with me as we check out other video games, but don't worry, we'll bring it all back to Halo. But let's take a look at a game like Call of Duty here. You don't really have any kind of idea of what team players are. Yes, you have the NATO side, and you have the Warsaw Pact. These are the two different sides people will spawn as for the different teams, and they kind of have a different art style, but for the most part, you can never really tell from just looking at a character if they're on your team or if they're on the enemy team, because you can see right here, the NATO, this is my NATO character, this is my Warsaw Pact character, and obviously, just looking at them by themselves, they just look like people with guns. That's all it really looks like. So how do you tell within the game who's on your team and who's on the enemy team? Well, let's show that. So what I'm going to do here is first let you watch the gameplay. And then as you watch this video, try to see if you can spot who's the enemy and who's the friendly player and try to actually think about why they are the enemy player. And we'll analyze it afterwards. <sighs> Now in this gameplay, were you able to pick out who is friendly and who is foe within this game? And were you able to tell exactly which faction these players were on? Probably not, because honestly, you can't really tell what faction each player is on when it comes to Call of Duty, especially at these distances with the small resolution of some of these characters, that they don't really pop out so much. So I wanted to kind of go into detail of exactly why you can tell these characters are enemy characters and why some of these are friendly characters. So when watching this gameplay, you can see the character, the player right here, throws a grenade up in the air. And you see these new players over here on the right side. Now he doesn't aim at them. Why? Because they have a blue marker above their head showcasing the gamer tag and a blue marker above their head, usually blue meaning friendly, which obviously in Halo Infinite, you'll be able to customize that however you like, but there's no outline system here. This shows a name and stuff like that, but you know that they're friendly because they constantly have a UI as soon as you see them on your screen. We'll see this later on in the video as well. Now this next section is when you first get to see an enemy player on screen and the player who's on the screen recording this recognizes this and there's no ui at all to showcase this right about here you can see that this character on the right side is kind of popped in between this rock line and this bush right here and there's no ui at all to showcase this but the thing is that the elements around the character are stagnant so when you see something moving like a character that doesn't actually have some form of ui over them then yeah most likely an enemy player and you can see here the person who's recording the game player recognizes readjusts their aim onto the character as a start shooting. There's still no UI at this point either, indicating that most likely this person is an enemy player. This person hasn't hit their shots yet, so they're not getting any hit markers. It's not until just here, we have the true indication that this is an enemy player because we have the red name above their head, the red dot showcasing their health as well, which is a different kind of UI that happens with the enemy characters within Call of Duty compared to their friendly characters. And again, continues on shooting, gets the hit markers, gets the kill, no problem right there. And as he gets this kill, a friendly character comes into the left side of the screen right here. And as soon as they're in the screen, you see their name above their head to indicate that that's a friendly player. As soon as you see him on screen, that's when you see the name. That's very important when it comes to Call of Duty and player recognition of who's enemy and who's foe. He's not interacting with them because it's very obvious to tell who's friendly and who's foe in this game. And as he peeks around the corner here, you'll see an enemy player with no form of UI over them whatsoever. You can see he's already starting to aim his gun at this new character because it's obvious like, well, there's no UI on this character's face. 
obviously it's an enemy player he adjusts starts shooting once again doesn't hit his shots but again you can see that instantly he was able to recognize okay that's an enemy player i need to start shooting at them that's why i think maybe with halo infinite the outline system maybe not be necessary and maybe just kind of like a holdover remnant of some classic gameplay element that has been changed now with the new game because think of it like this when you're developing a halo game if you're going to remove red versus blue how are you going to be able to indicate who is on the other team who's on your team well you have to put colors on them right because that's traditionally what we've done in halo but halo infinite is not a traditional Halo game. So quite possibly having enemy colors like an outline system might be more of a holdover remnant of a previous player recognition system which might not necessarily be needed for Halo Infinite. So let's break down this Halo Infinite clip right here to showcase whether or not UI is really needed when it comes to showcasing enemy players. One, you can see right here we have the blue outline of a friendly player with a blue dot above the head like we've seen in other games right now. So that totally makes sense and then when I progress forward through here I'm trying to grab this battle rifle because I can already see there's an enemy right here that's all kind of the middle, middle platform and as well if I back it up just a little bit there's an enemy up here in like the attic area of recharge so I grab this battle rifle and I look out right here if say if there was no UI on these characters would I be able to tell that these are most likely enemy players I would say well Yes, a red little square shade that we have above their head showcasing the yes, that's an enemy player, but what about the person behind them? Do I need to have a UI showcase that this player is an enemy character? Most likely not, as we do have an indication of a friendly player right here outlined in blue, filled in as well, and another character that's filled in in blue that's friendly up here. So obviously, if I don't see some form of a UI on a character, then most likely they're going to be an enemy player, as in like, well, they are an enemy player. And as I kind of progress through this clip here, you can see I kind of keep shooting back up, reload. The enemy player is now off my screen right now, but I still see my friendly players on here. And then as I back back out into the open, I can see, yes, there's that enemy player I was already shooting at. I continue firing and there we go. Get the hopefully get the kill. Yes, we do it right there. Now I have some firing action happening here on the right side of my screen because my teammate thought that was a good, good idea to shoot at me for whatever reason. So I go to reassess and see that there's a, obviously a blue outline around him. I move on with my day. Here's another clip from the preview guys that I wanted to showcase to you all to kind of give you a showcase about how I don't really need to have an enemy coloring to show that they actually are the enemy for very obvious reasons here. So I grab this battle rifle off the wall and I instantly start looking out into the open. And what I'm really kind of scanning for is that if I see like a friendly player right here, like a, that's outlined in blue, that obviously anyone who's gonna be like over here to the left side or around this turbine area, most likely coming from this back area because I just saw a blue X showcase that that player died right there. So there's gonna be probably three main locations enemy players are gonna be coming out of. You can see right here, here comes a new enemy out in the open right there. And I start firing in on him. Now, as soon as I get this kill, I'm reassessing for the next kill. And I'm looking around, I don't see anybody around. And now obviously, once that character comes out of this top area right here, starts running across, I recognize that there is no friendly UI on this player. So then I start shooting at him more than really that he's outlined in red. Now, this recent video from Late Night Gaming goes into the friend of foe system and how sometimes it can be kind of confusing. And he showcases right here that there was a time where he he actually didn't have the outlines on the enemy players for whatever reason and said that he was kind of confused exactly what's happened here and yes that would totally make sense to be confused on if these guys are friendly or foes because not necessarily that they don't have their outlines on them it's more than just that like you something you did not expect to see happen and so when you don't have the consistent ui experience of sh indicating who's friendly and who's foe that's where the confusion comes in. Not necessarily that they're not having like a specific type of team color or something like that. It's just more confusing because like, wait a minute, I was expecting to see some kind of UI indicating me that I'm supposed to be shooting at these characters. And when something's different or changed when from what's expected, that's where you definitely have your issues. So take this screenshot from his video, for example, in traditional Halos, what you would see then is having a red name pop up above their head. Now, what we just saw in Halo Infinite is that they would showcase an outline 
outline around them as well as an indicator above the head saying that they're an enemy player where in this case it's a complete bug where you see nothing at all so i don't think it's necessarily a issue of not having the outlines but i think just the issue that there is no ui whatsoever which makes it confusing and the bots throughout the entirety of the flight were always blue armor colored i guarantee you if i was staring at a character this long without any form of ui popping up on the screen i would be confused as well because i would be expecting to see some kind of a name pop up though in the case of halo infinite i'm expecting to see an outline of a player and when i don't see it then i'm confused but if i know there won't be any form of ui on a character when i see them within the context of a match then that's when it makes sense that having no ui whatsoever would make it an obvious choice that that's an enemy player so now you might be asking yourself the question, Kevin, what are you getting at with this video? What I'm saying is that Halo Infinite's indicator of friend or foe is just different. It's not necessarily better or worse, it's just different. And what developers have traditionally done is just utilize the UI to indicate who is friendly and who is foe. And from players playing around with the game, recognizing the mechanics of the UI can help make the relation of when they see somebody if they are an enemy player or if they're a friendly player. So would no player outlines for enemy players actually work out? Personally, I think they would and actually would help out with the immersion a bit more with the game. Because yeah, having these outlines is kind of cluttery and also doesn't really look that great in the game. It kind of takes that player that you're shooting out of the world and more into like your UI. And I believe if players build up that expectation, kind of like what we had previously with classic Halo, where all it did was just showcase a red name above a player's head or nothing at all, that would be enough of a differential between your friendly players to be able to indicate when a enemy player is on your screen. And having no enemy UI would also kind of help out alleviate the concern people have had about having that red outline of the UI really make you stand out within the worlds, making a stealth play a little less viable. Ultimately, it's up to 343 for them to decide a clear and obvious example of what makes an enemy player visible on your screen, what makes a friendly player visible on your screen. And as long as there is consistent between those differences then honestly it's not that big of an issue and like i said the outline system that we have now in halo infinite is not better it's not worse it's just different if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently check out the videos right here i got plays for all my halo videos i've been uploading daily about thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it i'll catch you on the next one peace out